If you've ever had the issue where you open up your business bank account and you wonder where all the money you made went, like where did it go? then today's video is gonna be really helpful for you. This is something I wish I had learned way back at the beginning of my business, and I'm gonna be taking you all the way back to 2016 when I started my business and knew nothing about personal or business finances and really just held everything together with some bubble gum and duct tape. Hello, welcome or welcome back. I'm Christina Scalera and I'm here to help you grow your wealth passively through things like digital products and better money management because in today's day and age, if you do not have multiple sources of income, especially from an online business, then you're really missing out in terms of what you could be doing to accelerate your path towards the things that you want, like a better house, more beautiful clothing, whatever it might be. And you're also missing out on the great benefits of an online business, which is a built-in network of friends who just get you, plus daily passive sales that you can just run to and check in on. and almost sometimes use your business like your own personal ATM. So if that sounds good to you, then make sure you're subscribed, make sure you're hitting that like button. And if you have any questions as we go through today's video, make sure you leave them in a comment below because I respond to every single comment that I receive. So one of the hardest lessons I've ever learned in business is that just because you make a lot of money doesn't mean that you're good at keeping a lot of money. And a little secret for all of you out there, or maybe a reminder for those of you who already knew this, if you can't keep and manage your money well, it will never matter how much money you make. You could have a giant lottery windfall of a year and it will all be gone within the next few months because you don't know how to manage it well. I used to think that I could just make more money and then as I made more, it would be easier to manage because clearly I'd have more money flowing in to spend and invest on my business. So if that sounds eerily familiar, then you're gonna wanna watch the rest of this video because that is not going to save you. Making more money is wonderful, but it's not going to save you from your current financial situation. The good news is that you are actually already in control of your future financial situation in your business. You just didn't know it yet. So rather than spend all your time and focus and attention and money on programs and resources that help you just grow grow your business, you're also going to want to dedicate an equal or even more amount of time and resources to things that help you to manage what's already coming into your business in a more meaningful and appropriate way. So I'll give you a good example of this. When I first started my business, I could not spend money fast enough. Like as soon as a dollar would come in, I would immediately put it back into the business. And this seemed to be working for quite some time, except for when I took a look back on the year and how much I had actually paid myself, I was in debt again. So I started a business, I got myself out of $73,000 of credit card debt with the things that I sold, but I quickly found myself developing more debt as I invested and committed to even more things in my business. And that was just perpetuating the cycle. Luckily for you, I didn't really fix that cycle until a couple years into my business, so I have a lot to talk about here. <laughs> Namely, how stressed and how much sleep I didn't get because I was constantly worrying about finances in my business. And even though it looked like I was growing super fast and all of a sudden everywhere to everyone, it didn't feel very authentic to me. And on top of that, it really delayed me launching this brand and what I talk about here on this channel because I didn't feel like I was prepared to teach people how to do something that I didn't even entirely enjoy doing myself because I hadn't figured out the money part of it. So I don't even want to think about how much money I left on the table by not starting this brand earlier because I was so afraid of like being a fraud and a sham that I had to figure that part out before I came over here and started to teach on how to run your shop because if I knew I couldn't do that profitably, then I shouldn't be teaching about it. So spoiler alert, I eventually learned how to do that. And that's what we're gonna cover a little bit today and in future videos. So one of the things that would have helped me to stop this cycle earlier is by setting aside some money that I just couldn't touch. That would be in an account for savings and taxes and all this other stuff. So when I first started my business, taxes weren't even in consideration because I didn't need to pay them. I was so broke and I was running so negative that the government actually owed me money some years. And yay, that's great, except for 
or when you go to look at buying a house or qualifying for rent for a better apartment and you have nothing to show for it. So my quality of life was very, very much impacted by running this business on such thin, if negative margins. And that's something I would definitely consider. If you see someone growing really fast, it could be that this is what they're doing and putting a lot of money into their business via PayPal loans or Stripe Capital or credit cards. These are all things that I leaned on and utilized during that time. Even though some of the things I mentioned weren't available then, whatever I could get my hands on that would be cash for my business to invest back into it, even if it wasn't my cash, it was money that I was borrowing from somewhere, usually at a very, very high rate. I didn't care. I just wanted to grow the business as fast as I could until I started to notice these negative life impacts. So it wasn't even until 2018 when I was well into the multiple six figures a year of revenue that I even started paying myself a salary. Now, if you've been following my journey, you know that's roughly two years, maybe two and a half years into my business when I realized I needed to start being compensated for all this work I was doing. I was running myself ragged. I also was in a not good relationship at the time, which arguably probably helped my business because I spent more time working on it than I would have in like a happy life situation. So it was really this confluence of things that weren't great for my life. And if I look back, honestly, the only thing that was propping me up and helping me to afford even basic groceries during this time was my service-based business, my law firm that did trademarks at the time. So even my e-commerce shop wasn't profitable just yet. Although that would flip in about mid 2018. And that's when I started to take paying myself a little bit more seriously. And this looked like taking an automatic withdrawal from my business. Now at this point, my shop was also an S corporation, which it shouldn't have been at this point, but I got bad advice from a CPA that obviously I like ditched a long time ago. And that meant that I had to pay myself via payroll, which is an added expense because payroll isn't free. You need a software or a company to do that for you typically. And I was no exception. However, one thing that was really helpful about the payroll software is that I could set up how often I wanted to get paid and for how much and into what accounts. So I set up my first Roth IRA roughly around this time and I increased the contribution to $115 per week, which would max out that retirement account for me going forward. And what was really nice is that because I was doing this from my payroll account, I never even saw that money. So when the rest of the money that I actually paid myself hit the bank account, it was free and clear after all that retirement savings. This is honestly one of the best things I did in hindsight without knowing how it was gonna turn out because I at least knew that I wasn't good enough with money to get like a big lump sum payout once a month or even twice a month. I needed it every week in smaller doses to help me manage it better and learn. That's the most important part here. Learn how to manage it. Everybody and their mom will make you think that you should have just been born knowing what I'm talking about here today, but even people that are good with personal finance aren't necessarily good with business finances. And this was a big shift for me to start getting paid on a weekly basis. Even if it was just a couple hundred bucks, it added up and when I could go back and start to look at my retirement account and see the hundreds of dollars that were now there after a few months, it really changed everything about how I lived my life and how I invested in my business. And honestly, things started to get even better and more profitable and easy for me at that point, because I was able to see that the result of my effort was actually paying off. This made it more likely that I would continue to do the things that were bringing me success and less likely to let go of the things that weren't really working for me, either emotionally or in my business where before I would have just held on and kept paying for them, hoping that one day they would have paid out. Being ADHD, a lot of people have told me that if I just had a budget, I would be doing so much better. And I have to disagree with this. What I did instead is what I encourage anybody who is impulsive or maybe has some OCD like I do or some ADHD. If you know yourself and you know you're not good with money because you tend to do impulsive things that end up hurting you in the long run, like going on a shopping binge or buying that really expensive thing because you had a bad day. Like I've been there, I've done that, I am that person. And what I did to safeguard myself against this without creating a budget is I started to break up where my money was coming into an auto those transfers 
especially into accounts that I was not able to touch very easily. So this is kind of funny, but let this be permission for those of you out there who like traditional finance help or insight has not helped so far. I actually set up checking accounts and destroyed the debit card like the second it came in because I wanted checking accounts where I could have things liquid enough that if I needed to use them, I could but I also wouldn't be able to touch them. So what I actually did at this time is I created some version of the, I think it's like Dave Ramsey's like envelope system or something. I made it my way and I created different checking accounts that had these different purposes in them. And then whatever I could automate out of those accounts, I did. So for example, instead of having just one big checking account, which is how I used to live my life, I started breaking those up into food, subscriptions, fun money, and so on. And I did the same thing with my business. And then I set up automated transfers so that I knew in my little ADHD brain that can't focus on many things at once and multitask like crap, I made sure that I just had to hit one number per month and that would make all the automations run. So everybody asked me as a business owner, how do you start paying yourself? How do you start budgeting when you're not sure what your income is going to be? And in my experience, what I ended up doing is just finding out what that target number was for myself every single month and then making sure I hit it. And that was really motivating as well as during the months when sales were a little bit slower to go out there and make the sales I needed to make in order to hit that number. Mostly because I didn't know what was gonna happen if my automations failed or broke or like, the money that I was accounting on automating into these accounts like didn't flow. So I just like went out there and did everything I could to make sure I hit that target number. And before I knew it, it was easier to make the target number plus a thousand. And then a few months later, I was making the target number plus a couple thousand and so on and so forth until I ended up selling my business this year. But that system has held true for me really, really well over the years without creating a budget and tracking things very annoyingly. <laughs> so you saw how I created like an unbudget budget. <laughs> Basically, as long as I hit my target number, all the numbers would flow into the right buckets. And then what I had to add back during this time was a bucket for taxes, both personally and professionally, because as an S Corp, my shop paid separate taxes than me personally. And so that just meant adding in an extra bucket and taking some off the top so that I never saw it. It was in the tax account. And honestly, it wasn't even a tax account. I was sending money directly to the entities that needed to get it from my payroll software so that I couldn't even touch it in some remote account. That's how impulsive I was. And I don't wanna say that I'm never gonna go back to being that impulsive, but I really hope I don't. <laughs> My mental health girlies are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. And the people that are like, just be better at this are good for you. Like, I'm glad you don't struggle with like mental health in the same way that I have. So with this me proofing my finances, both in my business and personal life, it was so much easier to work just knowing that if I hit one number, everything else would flow, all the taxes would be paid. I might even pay too much and get a refund, but I'm okay with that. So that was all the great starting point that I had for establishing a solid financial footing. And I wish I had done that earlier in my business career. I haven't even had a chance to talk about credit cards and their impact really on my business and on this waterfall system that I had set up. But I hope this honest insight into watching someone who is really not good at managing their money turn into someone who is and like actually peeling the curtain back behind that because there's a lot of people that are just like be abundant and make more than you need and then you'll be fine but that hasn't been my experience and I think a lot of it has to do with like whatever I've got going on but a lot of it also has to do with learning these things and because I was able to learn and implement them I know that I'm not the only one who can have some of these things working in their life and that's my hope for you the biggest problem I've seen my clients struggle with consistently since I started my business no matter what kind of services or anything that I've offered is cash flow. And to sum up this video, that's really what it's about is improving the cash flow in all areas of your life. Because if you don't have good cash flow management, then one of those accounts runs dry and that's when you start to have to lean on credit cards and get into debt and that keeps you up at night. So it's like this vicious cycle that 
you have to break by maybe setting aside $5 a month in a Roth IRA. That's literally where I started. I really hope this honest look into what I did and I'm a little worried about like how the internet is going to receive this. I feel like a lot of people are gonna be like, I already knew this. And I think another group of people are just gonna be like, you're an idiot just learn to budget, you dumb dumb. But this is what worked for me and it's now worked for many other people that I've helped to implement this. So I know I'm not the only one who traditional budgeting tools and templates and software and all that stuff hasn't worked out for. I also know that with my ADHD, I'm just not gonna be on top of trackers and things that ask me to do something on a daily or monthly basis. I might keep up with it for one month, but then I'm gonna forget or I'm gonna be tired or hungry or whatever the next month and I just won't have that discipline to go back in and look at it. And then what do you know? Three months later and you're way behind, super overwhelmed, of course you're never gonna go back to whatever that thing was, even if you had great initial success with it. Another takeaway I hope you get from this video is that you should be putting something aside for retirement because you will learn how to live off of the rest. So if you skim some off the top to put into a savings or retirement account, you're really not gonna miss it. Trust me, start with a low amount and then work your way up to maxing out that account or to a higher amount if there is no cap on it. In my experience, I've worked with a lot of different professionals, therapists, money coaches, financial planners, and at the end of the day, unless it was me who was actually making some kind of shift in my life by forcing myself to do it and then allowing the mindset to follow, I was not going to be successful with it. I think many people feel really bad about money because they try to make the mindset work for them. And then when that doesn't work, they try to force these like physical budget trackers and things like that. And then that doesn't work for them. So I said, screw all that. And I just made it all run without me by automating what money would be going where into what account. And yes, it was a pain in the butt, but it only took an afternoon of dedication to set up. And then I was golden. So if you are going to be the problem in your life, remove yourself and let everything flow without you. In my case, it's even easier because when I know that target number and I know it's gonna be hit, I know everything is going to flow as it should and everything's gonna be okay. And that, my friends, is the key to sleeping well at night. Knowing that you're not gonna wake up anymore at 3 a.m. wondering if you're gonna have enough money for retirement or whether you paid that credit card bill because everything is now automated and you have removed the problem which was you. Remember, learning about business finances and how to build wealth off of your business is going to feel like a foreign language. But as you start to hear certain terms over and over and over again, you will learn that language and it will become like second nature to you. So as you are diving in and learning about this new area of interest, this new focus that feels really uncomfortable right now, just know that you are not alone and it should feel uncomfortable. It should feel weird. If you go to a foreign country and you hear people speaking in a language that you don't know, it's gonna be weird. You're gonna feel left out. But if you stay in that country long enough and you listen to enough conversations and attempt the language a few times, every single attempt is going to get better and better. And that's the exact same thing with your finances. So think of it like learning a new language and don't be so hard on yourself when you mess up or mispronounce a word by making a wrong account or screwing up an automation. These things are going to happen, but they're not indicators that you're bad with money. They're just indicators that you're trying something new and you haven't quite worked it out yet. So keep that in mind as you move forward as a better steward of your business's finances. And if you're looking at more of my personal journey, including more honest anecdotes, I've included those in the video that just popped up on your screen. So you'll wanna watch that next. I'm being really raw and real with you guys after watching so many people try to help me elevate into a abundance or whatever other BS is out there. Like, no, that's just not gonna work for my messed up ADHD-ness. <laughs> and thank you all so much for being here and for watching.